thank Dr. Kaushik Pal sir to give an opportunity to participate in this webinar. A single crystal or monocrystalline is a solid material in which the crystal lattice of the entire sample is continuous. So it have unique properties like mechanical, optical, electrical, etc. These are the important in various industrial applications, especially in optics and electronics. The presence of inversion center in a crystal structure decides if it is a centrosymmetric or non-centrosymmetric. The crystallographically non-centrosymmetric materials play an important role in non-linear second harmonic generation, ferroelectricity, etc. These are the applications of uh, single crystals. Um, in my work, I can use paranitronilene and the ethanoic acid because the nitronilene is a substituted benzene molecule with a donor amine group and an accepted nitro group. And its susceptibility is 26 times greater than that of aniline, which is the re key requirement property for second harmonic generation. And ethanoic the monocarbonic acid. by process and the crystal grown was obtained by slow evaporation method. I can take the equal molar ratio of paranitro aniline and ethanoic acid and in a methanol solution and condense to about 8 hours with a temperature range of 85 degrees Celsius. After we get a saturated solution of paranitro anilinium ethanate, then it, I can filter in a beaker and kept in an undisturbed position to allow slow evaporation. After after 15 days, we get a black needle single crystal of paranitronilinium ethanate. The grown crystal was subjected to various uh, like structural, linear optical, non-linear optical, luminescence, mechanical, thermal, characterization, to analyze its properties and find its action in various fields. Of the sample was analyzed, was obtained. It is a non destructive analytical technique. There are a number of methods are used in X ray diffraction. From single crystal XRD, the sample is in the form of a crystal. It, give, it gives information about the unit cell parameters within a lattice. From single crystal XRD data of NAE, we conclude the crystal system belongs to triclinic with non-central symmetric space group P1. This is the powder XRD pattern of NAA. In powder XRD, the sample in the form of powder. Sharp the spectrum indicates the purity of the grown sample. This is the parameter obtained from both single crystal XRD powder XRD data. From both are confined, the crystal belongs to triclinic crystal with P1 space group. The structure of the molecules are analyzed by the various vibrational studies from Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy used to identify the presence of functional groups in a sample by using infrared radiation. In the same way, Fourier transform Raman spectroscopy is used to analyze the sample by using Raman scattering. Both are recorded in the wavelength range of 400 to 4000 centimeter inverse. These are the FTIR and Raman spectrum of NAM, the sharp peak at 1632 and 1647 indicates the presence of the molecule and 752 and 755 confirms the presence of nitro group in the grown compound. In addition, in the material transmission no. and absorption.
with the temperature was measured by using differential scanning calorimetric. Similarly, the thermogravimetric was used to the change of mass with the temperature. Nowadays, instantaneously, to, sorry, simultaneously, two parameters are measured at the same time. For example, the TGTSC thermal analysis, we can measure the change of mass and heat with the same time. This is the TGTSC thermal analysis of NAA from TG the graph. The decomposition was start up to 148 degrees Celsius to 280 degrees Celsius. And after that, the decomposition was constant. That is the decomposition up to 98.77 percentage was added. The remaining mass is due to the residues in the ground compound. At the same time, DSC curve shows a short endothermic peak at 148 degrees Celsius, which is also confirms the melting point of the sample is nearly equal to 148 degrees Celsius. Conclusion, the study gives NAE belongs to a triclinic crystal system with a P1 non-centrosymmetric space group. The linear optical study stored 99% transmission and the non-linear second harmonic generation efficiency of P was nearly 1.24 times the top of P. The fluorescent test confirms the luminescence property of the sample. The Vickers micro hardness test gives the NA crystal belongs to soft medium. The TGTSC thermal analysis gives the melting point of NA was 148 degrees Celsius. So based on results we can find out the NAE was used in NLO applications for below 148 degrees Celsius. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Sagundra Devi. Sir. <laughs> Sir yes. Most of uh, yeah, most of your presentation we can't hear and we can't visible. Because I okay. think you are, yeah, network low, but, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, not an issue, not an issue. Uh, maybe uh, you can go to the FTR, FTR, FTR analysis. Okay, sir. Yeah, can go for uh, your analysis. Slide for analysis. Sir, not clear, sir. Yeah, I think the network issues. No problem, doctor. So I'm open. I'm open to uh, audience okay. and uh, our uh, presenter and speakers. So any any anything you want to discuss with Dr. Sagundra Devi about his uh, research on the, and study about this? She talk talk uh, just now. Any any anything you want to asking? Anything? want to discuss with Dr. Sagundra Devi. So we open now. Uh, Dr. Sagundra Devi, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir I am Dr. Madhu Mohan. I, am, I, I also belong to Tamil Nadu. I am in Banariyaman. Madam, your presentation, fortunately, I could see a little. Uh, you are talking okay. about non symmetric okay, uh, single crystals, right? Yes, sir. Uh, can you see? I worked on electrostriction. I worked on some of the properties of uh, non central symmetric. Have you worked on any? I had seen okay, talking sir. about uh, micro hardness. I think Vickers number VHN. Yes. Uh, any optical? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any optical properties you have dealt with? Any optical property you have seen? Uh, you have observed in which materials, sir? In your materials, you have uh, done uh, uh, nitro uh, materials, right? Yes, sir. Yes, in UV visible study, I will take answer uh -huh. linear optical property. Uh -huh. It will because show 99%. Please come again. Again, there is a network issue. Sir, I take a linear optical study, UV visible spectroscopy, sir. Okay, ma'am. No, what is the non centrosymmetric non uh, what is the non centrosymmetric contribution there? 
sir land centrosymmetric contribution is important in non linear optical sir that is the uh, second harmonic and generation it, third uh, harmonic uh, generation yes have you have you taken any study of second harmonic shg yes the second harmonic generation study i taken sir it shows a 1.2 plus 24 times greater than kdp sir okay ma good thank you thank you Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Mohan, for your sharing session. So, any, any, anything you want to discuss uh, with the Dr. Sagundala about the research? Uh, Dr. Sagundala, I think uh, there's no more questions. So, thank okay, you sir. so much, ma'am, your time. But uh, yeah, we. <laughs> Sir, normal, it's no okay, sir. The network, <laughs> very eagerly yeah, to yeah. participate, sir. But uh, network problem. <laughs> yeah, uh, no problem, ma'am. Yes. Thank you so much to join okay, and support this conference. Okay, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Sir, sir, thank you. Thank you to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, guys. We move on to next presenter, Dr. K. Vakes Tesan from Sri Vidya Madhya Art and Science College, India, uh, to give a short lecture. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me, Nabila. Mm -hmm. So, never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, we start, uh, Dr. Prabhu. Prabhu just now is. Oh, yes, sir. I'm from that. Profile. Okay. Yeah. We move on. Presenter for this afternoon, Dr. M. Pongkali Satya Prabhu from Banari Amma Institute of Technology, India, will present about investigation in self-assembly hydrogen bonded liquid crystal formula between benzene acid. I would like to invite Mr. Nagaran to chair the session. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for uh, giving me introduction. Then again, sir, am I audible and my PPT is visible? Yes, sir. It's okay, sir. Can can continue, sir. You start. You can start your presentations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So today I am going to discuss uh, regarding the investigations in a uh, self-assembled hydrogen bond or liquid crystals formed between Excuse benzoic me, acids. Tell me, sir. Excuse me. Sir. Uh, yeah, please switch to uh, slide show, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. So this is the abstract I submitted to our uh, conference. So we will be forming a liquid crystals between benzoic acids. So let us see what is liquid crystals, types of liquid crystals, and the mesogenic phases exhibited by the liquid crystals. So let us first uh, we'll be discussing regarding the design, synthesis. And the characterization of single hydrogen bonded liquid crystals, which is formed between benzoic acids, and we will be discussing the phases formed between these benzoic acids. And investigation is done optically, thermally, and electrically by means of polarizing optical microscope, differential scanning calorimetry, and a impedance analyzer, respectively. And we have not only observed the conventional phases, that is, pneumatic, uh, spectric C, spectric G. But also new phases uh, by name symmetric X and symmetric R. So based upon the transition temperatures, enthalpy values, and the phase range, mesogenic range, we have constructed the phase diagrams of the corresponding complexes. And the thermal studies has been deeply investigated by means of thermal equilibrium, order of transition, thermal stability, etc. And finally, we have discussed the electrical studies, which means we have done the dielectric. Investigations in extent, and we have constructed the cold Davidson plot from which we have calculated the activation energy possessed by the particular complex. And the molecular modeling has been point for the dielectric relaxations being exhibited by the mesogenic complexes, which is formed between the benzoic acids. So, this is the objective of my work to design and synthesis a novel series of liquid crystals. Exhibiting mesogenic nature and correlating the physical properties of the mesogens to its chemical constitution, understand the influence of hydrogen bond in terms of occurrence of phase and phase variance. So, hydrogen bond liquid crystals is our field where we form the liquid crystal complexes between the 
benzoic acids. And we will be characterizing the new phases observed as pneumatic cosmetic based upon the uh, thermal and electrical studies. Finally, we will be constructing the phase diagram and analyzing the electrical properties. So here we have uh, formed hydrogen bonded liquid crystals between 50 different complexes. So let A be the complex on benzoic acid and B be the other benzoic acids. So through intermolecular hydrogen bonding, we have formed 50 such complexes exhibiting mesogenic nature. So the phases, the phase range and the transition temperatures observed by the liquid crystals has been characterized by optical, thermal and electrical studies by means of POM, that is polarizing optical microscope, DSE, differential scanning, calorimetry and uh, dielectrical studies by means of impedance analyzer. So this is the index what we are going to discuss in today's session. And you know the liquid crystals, it is not being only confined to the a single uh, application aspect. We have medical thermography, liquid crystals. In most cases, we think that liquid crystals are only useful for the display devices. No, but also it has a variety of applications. It starts from uh, the advanced applications of uh, medical thermography, liquid crystal lenses, high strength fibers, gas liquid chromatography, display devices, drug delivery, and etc. So let us start what is of liquid crystals. It is a state of matter that has both the properties of a solid and conventional liquid. So the name indicates it flows like a liquid but exhibits the crystallinity properties. So this was first discovered by a, a scientist, uh, uh, Frederick Reitzner, and we classify uh, the liquid crystals into two broad categories called as thermotropic liquid crystals and lyotropic liquid crystals. So what we today is going to see is regarding thermotropic liquid crystals, which is a temperature variant one. When we heat it and when we cool it, we get intermediate phases rather than direct phase trans matter transition. For example, if you take ice, if you start melting, it becomes pure liquid and again if you heat it, it becomes vapor and when you can cool it, the condensed vapor becomes water, the water becomes ice. There is a direct transition between one state of matter to the other state of matter. But here we have intermediate phases exhibited when we heat or cool the system. So hydrogen bonded liquid crystals, it is a branch of thermotropic liquid crystals which has rooted its importance in display due to the several properties exhibited. And we have liquid characterization techniques. We use FTIR, ABB BOM MB3000 series for the chemical structure confirmation. That is, the hydrogen bond formation is being confirmed through FTIR, and the molecular environment possessed by the structure is being further confirmed by NMR. And we use optical polarizing microscope for our uh, optical studies and the differential scanning colorimetry for our thermal analysis. And we go for a impedance analyzer, Agilent 4192A, where we use uh, this instrument particularly for the extensive dielectric studies. And DSO, digital storage op oscilloscope, we can uh, use it for spontaneous polarization. So this is how we form a hydrogen bonded liquid crystals. So uh, hydrogen bond is formed between hydrogen and an electronegative atom such as chlorine, oxygen, fluorine, etc., nitrogen. Depending upon the molecular interaction, it is again further classified into intermolecular as well as intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Here we speak about intermolecular hydrogen bonding because we choose A and B as the ingredients. A will be the one benzoic acid and B will be the other benzoic acid. So complementary hydrogen bond is found between two ingredients. Complementary in the sense they act as the donor as well as the acceptor. So hydrogen bonding is a powerful tool in assembling the molecules. It is the, we can call this hydrogen bonding as the weakest bond and a fifth force existing in nature because it is very easy to form and easy to break. And this special property makes the mesogenic complexes to get accumulated or to form a hydrogen bond between the ingredients and form the mesogenic phases. So they act as a complementary bond. They act as a hydrogen bond donator or acceptor, electron acceptor, and vice versa. 
So stable and dynamic complexes can be achieved by means of this hydrogen bonding. And the mesomorphisms results from proper combination of molecular interaction and shape of the molecule. So we should be in particular choosing the ingredients and fine tuning the environmental conditions to attain the phase polymorphism exhibiting between the ingredients. And how to design this hydrogen bonded liquid crystals? So we will be careful in properly designing which and we should follow the well documented synthesis rules. We can take a mesogenic complex and mesogenic complex and we can get a mesogenic as a product. So let we are here we discuss regarding the A and B. A is taken as the dicarboxylic acid and B is the other benzoic acid. So of course the product AB will be again a, a mesogenic one. So we can achieve the, either the linear bent or zigzag structures by choosing the appropriate ingredients. So we even we can achieve single bond hydrogen single bond hydrogen bond liquid crystals, double hydrogen bond liquid crystals, or multiple hydrogen bond liquid crystals. In our case, that is the bond existing between benzoic acids exhibit single hydrogen bonded liquid crystals, which is taken as one is to one molar ratio. And the temperature of the environment, we should be a properly sterilized, and we should be have a proper chemical conditions of the solvent. We were here we use DMF that is dimethyl formamide, and mechanical stirring time should be analyzed. And finally, the purity of the chemical ingredients also plays a vital role. So the, the purity of the product depends upon the purity of the ingredients. So in our uh, discussion, we have taken benzoic acids, chlorobenzoic acids, and iodobenzoic acids, which forms hydrogen bonded with liquid crystals with P and alkyl oxy benzoic acids. The solvent we used here is DMF, that is dimethyl formamide. And this is the well rooted synthetic procedure that has been followed to. Uh, design and synthesis liquid crystals. We will be taking a uh, benzoic acids. It has its own uh, carbon number. The carbon chain length varies from pentyl to dodecane. So it starts from 5 BaO, 6 BaO, 7. Because beyond 5, we don't get any phases, mesophases. We have only stable uh, symmetric G phases or F phases. So we confine our uh, studies from 5 pentyl to dodecane, 12 BaO. So we just uh, make a uh, a dimer into monomer by solving it in excess DMF. And when we take a 1 is to 1 ratio of the benzoic acids, we could get a NBAO plus MBAO hydrogen bonded complexes. So here N and M represents the alkyl carbon number. So N may be varying from 5 to 12 and M may be varying from 5 to 12. So we could get a different mesogenic complexes exhibiting different phase of polymorphism. And this scheme uh, is used to represent the liquid crystal formation exhibited between 10 BAO and MBAO complexes. So we, the left side will be keeping a 10 BAO as the fixed one, and we can vary 10 BAO plus 5 BAO, 10 BAO plus 6 BAO till it reaches 10 BAO plus 12 BAO. And we will have done extensive research in optical, thermal, and dielectric properties exhibited by those complexes of particular homologous series. So 11 homologous series. Comprising of 50 complexes have been designed and synthesized. So these are the complexes, this is the series, and the number of complexes has been listed in the table. So this uh, from a table uh, from a POM studies and DSC studies, we could uh, finally get a, at a, a data uh, for the different complexes. Uh, for example, this is a representative case for 5BAO plus 6BAO here. We could uh, vary the carbon number from 6 to 12 uh, and the molecular weight and the corresponding phase variance possessed by the complexes and the corresponding mesogenic range. What is mesogenic range? It is the entire thermal range where we could get the intermediate phases from uh, liquid to the crystal. So the entire thermal range is being depicted. So this is the thermal range where we have the intermediate phases called as pneumatic or smectic C, smectic F or smectic G. So once if we form the hydrogen bonded complexes, it is necessary to understand the bonding or the molecular structure exhibited by the product. So we go for the fundamental uh, electromagnetic spectroscopy, that is Fourier transform infrared spectrum, uh, where we could get a sharp peak around a 2900 uh, wave number, which indicates the formation of OH, hydrogen bonding, that is intermolecular hydrogen bonding. We have taken FTIR for precursors, then for the mesogenic complexes, and you could see a intensity that is a sharp variation in the band exhibited by the product.
product formed. And here, this FTR spectra is uh, illustrated for uh, IBA plus 11BAO complex. That is, this for iodine benzoic acid and uh, undecal benzoic acid. Similarly, when you go for iodine benzoic acid and 9BB benzoic acid, we could get the NMR structure where we are able to get the hydrogen environment exhibited, exhibited by the product being formed between IBA and 9BAO. And these are the other uh, example uh, spectra which has been recorded for 9 BAO, 7 BAO complexes, and 12 BAO and 11 BAO complexes. So once we just synthesize and we have confirmed the hydrogen and formation through the fundamental analysis, we just go for POM. POM, that is the optical uh, investigation, which is being done by polarizing optical microscope. So this is the primary characterization technique. Because without this, we cannot confirm the phases being formed between our uh, complexes. So this is the fundamental characterization technique. And here we use Nikon imaging software for recording, uh, retrieving the images. So from this POM studies, we could get an abundant data. For example, we are able to get the phase polymorphism. The total phase exhibited by the complex can be very well understood from the heating and cooling run of POM. So the phase polymorphism can be clearly understood and identification of orthogonal tilted phases. So we have pneumatic and symmetric phases, various kinds of phases. So the classification of phases could be understood only by seeing and recording the textures exhibited by the phases. And onset and inset transition temperatures or what temperature the phase is being induced and what temperature it is being concluded can be clearly understood from the temperatures which is being recorded using the HES402 and ST6 standard temperature controller and hot and cold stage softwares which are being clubbed with NIS, Nikon imaging software. And growth and stabilization of mesophysics can be clearly recorded from this P-volume. So at the onset, we are able to increase the temperature with the, the accuracy of 0.1 degree Celsius, and we're able to clearly record the growth and stabilization of phases within the mesogenic range. Enantiotropic and monotropic transitions can also be clearly understood from this POE investigations. Enantiotropic, the phases will be visualized or viewed from both cooling and heating runs. And monotropic, if it is only visible in one run, it is called as monotropic. And if it is visible in both the heating and cooling run, it is classified as enantiotropic transitions. And even the narrow use of thermal span is distinctly visualized. So the thermal range, for example, many phases may exhibit a, a narrow phase thermal range, even one to two degree that can be exactly captured using this uh, POM using this software. And optical and electrical phenomena, for example, if you supply field energy, electrical field, or thermal field, whatever it may be, the uh, phenomena exhibited by the complexes are being understood from this POM investigation. So there's such a uh, beautiful investigation. And I could sh show you the textures later on in my discussion. So these are the phases exhibited in our uh, benzoic acids, uh, liquid crystal complexes. We have pneumatic. Nemata in the sense, in Greek, it is called as a thread-like textures. It may be droplets, threaded, or Schiller in four brushes. Cholesteric, cholesteric is, uh, again, it is, resembles the pneumatic phase, and it is called as ferroelectric in nature. The carbon atoms surrounded by four different groups leads to uh, ferroelectric nature of thing. If you are able to get a ferroelectric liquid crystals, then pneumatic will be named as cholesteric phase. And we have threaded pneumatic textures. And we have, uh, so we play with uh, pneumatic and smectic because they have positional and orientational ordering. And when you go for smectic F and smectic G, they are called as higher ordered phases. Uh, which don't find a wide uh, application aspects. So our focus is only to the pneumatic and smectic C phases. Smectic is called as ordered or layered phases. And these are the textual observations what we have done using POI. So these are the intermediate phases exhibited in different complexes that are formed between the benzoic acids. So pneumatic multicolor droplets observed in a chlorobenzoic acid and the octyl benzoic acids. And threaded, as I told you, threaded is called as a nemata, is called as thread like textures. So you could see uh, threaded textures being observed in octyl benzoic acids and uh, decal benzoic acids. And Schiller in four brushes, you could see that uh, textures exhibiting a, a swastik like a thing, what we call it as Schiller in four brushes. And threaded cholesterol observed in malic acid and uh, 
eight benzoic acid. So this is not a recording benzoic acid, but I have shown intentionally that is it is a cholesterol uh, ferroelectric phase exhibited by the ferroelectric uh, liquid crystalline complex. And this is called as four brush threaded pneumatic observed in eight BAO and ten BAO. The thread like textures, and you could see shillerin texture observed in. Uh, Decal benzoic acid and octal benzoic acid, which leads to the smectic phases and the broken focal cone. See, you could see that the broken focal textures and they are called the smectic phases. You could see the dark and bright domains, uh, which is a, a fine application of the smectic phase in a tilt angle. We are able to measure the tilt angle measurements in the liquid crystals. And this is a checkered board observed in 12 BAO and 7 BAO. That is a do decal benzoic acid and a heptyl benzoic acid. And finally, the multicolored uh, mosaic uh, smectic G phase, which is observed in pentyl benzoic between benzo pentyl benzoic acid and uh, hexyl benzoic acids. So, so similarly, smectic G, this is the worm-like texture. This is the first texture observed ever in the history of liquid crystals in our laboratory. We coin the name as smectic X because the unknown texture is called a smectic uh, X. So we coin and it is said to be. Uh, Ordered phase, hence it is called a smectic X, which is being observed in a octal benzoic acid and dodecal benzoic acid. And this is again worm like texture observed in a ferroelectric liquid crystal. So you could see that uh, uh, worm like, uh, you could see that uh, the texture to be exhibiting a worm like motion. So we coin the name as worm like smectic X, the unknown phase. And the canals will be uniformly distributed, and we could uh, have been taken this as a diffraction pattern medium. So we can, can use it for helix uh, studies also. So that narrow canals will be exhibiting as the lines that has been drawn over an optical plane surface, which acts or serves as a diffraction pattern medium. And you could see the ribbon-like textures. Again, this is a novel texture, which is being observed between the benzoic, iodo benzoic acid and undecal benzoic acids. So you could see that uh, texture is in form of a ribbon-like uh, appearance. And homeotropic texture in pneumatic phase, cocoon texture of iodobenzoic. Again, it is one more novel texture uh, uh, being observed in our laboratory cocoon texture. Barochromatic textures, that is uh, uh, both, you could see that uh, red color uh, textures and uh, green color texture. In uh, both the thing, you could see the texture remains uh, same, but only the color gets varied. That is called as parachromatism. Parachromatism, in the sense, the colors gets varied. Texture remains same, and the color gets varied when the temperature is being varied. So with respect to temperature, the texture remains same and the color gets varied accordingly to E is equal to HG. The wavelength uh, varies and this finds a wide application in the filtering action that will be discussed in the latter sections. So DSC again, this is the thermal technique used uh, for analyzing the abundant information. So from this DSC differential uh, scanning calorimetry, we could get the phase transition temperatures. We can correlate and compare the temperatures observed with POM and DSC. So DSC is the closed environment where we have different scan rates. Uh, we just purge nitrogen gas and we use to maintain that uh, stable environment. And there may be some temperature ingredient, uh, temperature variant between uh, POM and DSC. And obviously, we can uh, confirm from the uh, DSC uh, data that phase transition temperatures and enthalpy value possessed by the complex order of phase transition, either it is first order or second order. The strength of the order possessed by the mesogenic phases can be elucidated from the Novot and Cox parameter, again, which is from only the DSC. They, from DSC thermogram, we could derive n number of parameters, and one among them is order of transition and thermal span of individual phases. The span exhibited by the individual phases can be clearly captured from this DSC thermograms, that is heating run as well as the cooling run, and nature of the phase as monotropic or anisotropic. So that can be uh, confirmed uh, from the DSC also. So one phase which is observed in heating may not be observed in cooling or vice versa. So we are able to identify the mesogenic phase as monotropic or anisotropic from the DSC thermograms. And finally, thermal equilibrium of the system can be also calculated. That is the energy possessed by the system in the heating run will should be equal to energy possessed by the system in the cooling run. The deviation leads to the monotropic or anisotropic transitions. So from one DSC thermogram, we are able to 
obtain the transition temperatures, thermal stability, thermal equilibrium, order of transitions, etc. And this is the a typical representation of a DSC thermogram possessed by hydroquinone and, uh, and decaloxybenzoic acids. And uh, between 10 and MBA, MBA homologous is between benzoic acids. So when uh, we just put all together, uh, a series may have seven to eight complexes based upon the number of uh, carbon numbers choosed. And this is the DSC thermograms possessed by the liquid crystals in the cooling ground. The second and the table column indicates the phases observed, the transition temperatures, and the enthalpy values possessed by the individual phases for 8 BAO and MBAO series. And we could come across a new phenomenon or a, a interesting phenomenon called as odd even effect. What is odd even effect? The transition temperatures and its corresponding enthalpy values. We derive odd even effect from the transition temperatures and the enthalpy value possessed by the individual complexes of the homologous series. And the magnitude of transition temperatures or enthalpy values will be different for different uh, homologous series. Even counterparts exhibit one pattern, whereas odd counterparts exhibit the other pattern. For example, when you go for the entire series from a uh, pentyl to dodecyl 5, 7, 9, 11 complexes exhibit one trend, whereas 6, 8, 10, 12 exhibits the other trend. That is, odd counterpart will be exhibiting one trend, whereas the even part will be exhibiting the other trend. And this phenomenon is referred as odd even effect, which has been observed by and explained well by Marcel Jain in the year 1974. And these are some of the odd even effects possessed by the benzoic acid complexes. You could see hydroquinone NBAO. Chlorobenzaldehyde and benzoic acids. So, with respect to alkaloxy carbon number, the temperature gets varied in an odd and even form. So, odd complex exhibits a trend and even counterparts exhibit the other trend. And this is called as odd even effect. So, based upon the transition temperatures for different complexes and other mesogenic phases, we construct a diagram called as phase diagram. So, this phase diagram. It gives abundant information about the entire series. For example, the phase polymorphism exhibited by overall complexes, thermal width possessed uh, by the individual phases, variation of phase boundaries, where the one phase starts, stops and where the other phase starts inducing, in presence of odd even effect, quenching of the phase, origination of the phases, phase abundance, effect of alkaloxy carbon number on the phases can be inferred from a single diagram known as phase diagram. For example, I could uh, show you the phase diagram of iota benzoic acids uh, and uh, N benzoic acids that is drawn between alkaloxy carbon number and temperature. You could see that the uh, phases, nematic, uh, smectic X, smectic C, smectic F, smectic X1, smectic ribbon, smectic R, what you call it as, and smectic X1 is called as cocoon-like textures. So, uh, when you see that phase diagram, you could see what are the phases exhibited by the complexes in a nutshell. The thermal range where the uh, mesogenic phase starts, where the crystal is being formed, and what are the intermediate phases temperatures, and where new phase starts, where it ends, everything can be clearly evinced from this phase diagram. And these phase diagrams are formed between uh, pentyloxy uh, and other benzoic acids, hexyloxy and other benzoic acids. Uh, that is keeping uh, the left hand side is fixed, the benzoic acid, other we can vary the carbon length, which gives to formation of many mesogenic complexes by the Wells in the sister root procedure. And heptyloxy benzoic acids uh, with other benzoic acids, similarly, octyloxy, nonyloxy, decaloxy, undecaloxy, and dodecaloxy benzoic acids. So we are able to get a uh, not only really all the conventional phases, we could get new phases called as metric X. And the range of the new phase or the uh, desired phase can be altered and varied using the binary mixtures that we have not discussed here. We can take the A and B ingredient and we can vary the molar concentration where the desired phase thermal range can be expanded or can be contracted based upon the molar concentration ratio. What we use it. And this is the uh, schematic uh, tabular representation of the complexes as well as the phases exhibited by the complexes 
within the Comologous series. So this is, you could see 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The benzoic acids and the other M benzoic acids and the corresponding phases observed within those complexes. So in 12 BO and MBO, we cannot get 12 MBO plus 12 MBO because it is the same ingredient. When you go for 12 plus 11, we get NXC. 12 plus 10, we could get NXC. So similarly, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. When you go on decreasing the carbon number, you could uh, see that uh, the phases has been uh, disappeared and we could do only the conventional phases. Right. So other uh, measurement is called a stilt angle here. It is called as the glaring angle. We could see that LCD applications, uh, when you go for a LCD display device application, we had a, we get a glaring angle. That is when you go beyond the normal. Is, uh, when you go beyond 45 degree, we couldn't see the screen perfectly, what we call as tilt angle. That is the tilt angle is an important parameter in display device applications. And this can be measured by various uh, methods. For example, X-ray, MOSBR spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance, dielectric absorption studies, and we prefer a optical extinction technique. Optical extinction technique is the conventional technique which uses the mean field theory predicted value, that is beta. So we will be having a known value. From a known value, we are able to get the optically tilted value of the corresponding magnetic phases. And this is the primary order parameter. Tilt angle is a primary order parameter. That is, this is observed only in symmetric phases, not in pneumatic phases. So we cannot go because the pneumatic phases possess the uh, positional ordering, uh, orientation ordering, and here it becomes the positional ordering. So, which is present in one and which is absent in the other is called as the primary order parameter. So, this is only confined to the symmetric phases. And to confirm the new phases as symmetric, we go for tilt angle measurement. And this cannot go beyond 45 degree because that is the normal director. So, this is how the mesogenic molecule is tilted with respect to the director. And as I told you, symmetric phases, it is layered phases. When you go for optical extension technique, the bright and dark domains that is being observed in the mesogenic complexes leads to the measurement of field time. Values uh, processed for a chloro benzoic acid with the different benzoic acids and um, methyl as, um, methylic acid with the uh, benzoic acids. So, uh, when will be stopping the measurement when you are able to achieve the stabilized uh, value so the value will be repeated if you go on in, increase uh, decrease the temperature so it gets stabilized and we fit our uh, measured values with the uh, uh, mean field predicted value beta that is critical component which we keep it as 0 0.5 which is in good agreement with the mean field predicted value this is called the dielectric relaxation uh, from dielectric relaxation to go for that all dielectric insulators uh, that is a dielectrics here we are able to measure the permittivity for and the cold cold and cold davidson uh, plots given complexes using that uh, Agilent 419 to low frequency impedance analyzer for different temperatures at a particular phase, the frequency gets varied and gets suppressed. You could see the suppression. The frequency gets suppressed as the temperature is being decreased. And this is how it is happening in terms of pneumatic phase that is orthogonal phase or else metric phase that is a tilted phases also. And we are able to get the activation energy. From activation energy, we are able to get the anchoring energy energy possessed by the complex. So with the high anchor uh, activation energy, it is believed that it possesses a high stabilization, which means the anchoring energy is very, very stronger. It can be taken for the diversified applications, electrical applications. And we could get the asymmetric curve and hence we are able to plot the cold Davidson, uh, Davidson plots. And the diagram figure is being given in form of a table column where you could see the activation energy 0.987 for uh, non aloxy benzoic acid and uh, decal oxy benzoic acid. And uh, other interesting application is optical shuttering and filtering action. So, when you go for a shuttering action, what is shuttering action? When we fill a liquid crystal in a cell, a conducting cell, polyamide uh, buffered cell, you could see the light is being extincted. 
in one part. This is the first diagrammatic representation shows that uh, we have not applied any field. In the second representation, you could see the light is being distinctly varying. And in the final thing, you could see it is completely extincted, what we call it as shuttering action. So it can be used as an optical shutters in a cameras. It can be used for blocking the light. And the next thing is called as a filtering action. Filtering action at a desired wavelength, we are able to achieve a particular wavelength and we can just filter all the undesired wavelengths. And uh, we, as we are well known about the filters, filters can be of a high pass, low pass, band pass and notch filter and we were able to even see that those in nematogens. So when we go for nematic, it can easily, the nematogenic molecules can easily respond to the external stimulus or electrical stimulus impulse applied to the system and based upon the mesogenic reactions you could see that it improves to a particular wavelength and from the traces of the wave number and the intensity measured we could get the types of filters. I pass. So, for example, you could see the filtering action in dodecaloxy benzoic acid and octyl benzoic acid. It just goes up and comes down, which is called as the low pass filter. I pass it just steeps higher. A notch filter seems to be like an order even effect. And band pass it seems to be like a, a band uh, restricting region. So here we could get a low pass filter, a high pass filter in a dodecaloxy benzoic acid with other benzoic acids. And again, a low pass filter in case of a benzoic acids and dodecyl benzoic acids with nonyl, octyl, and undecyl benzoic acids, respectively. So, what we conclude from our discussion is so we have taken a benzoic acids, 11 series of benzoic acids have been uh, designed and have been synthesized. And the establishment of the hydrogen bonding is being done by FTR, and the molecular environment has been further confirmed by NMR studies. And POM reveals the texture observation of the mesogenic phases and the differential scanning colorimetry is used to find the transition temperatures of the complexes possessed. And from phase diagram, we were able to get the abundant information. From tilt angle, the glaring angle of particle complex has been uh, established. And from dielectric studies, we could get the activation energy possessed by the complexes. And uh, not only that, we have gone for uh, optical filtering action and optical shuttering action, which finds a variety of applications in the display applications. So I thank the organizing committee of ISCM and B2021 for giving me a wonderful opportunity to uh, discuss my uh, our work in this uh, fruitful uh, platform. And I thank my college, uh, Banari Institute of Technology, for uh, giving me permission for presenting my paper in this wonderful conference. I also thank my uh, professor, uh, Dr. M L N Madhumogan sir, and Liquid Crystal Laboratory teammates, my research scholars, and uh, science and uh, engineering research board, sir, who has given up uh, funding support to carry out our research work in our laboratory in Delhi. Thank you, professors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Prabhu. And uh, I think uh, Prof. Samo got uh, some discussion. Yes, Prof. Samo, please proceed, uh, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, excellent uh, lecture. Uh, so thank uh, you, sir. I was looking at you, your this, uh, diagrams and so I didn't see, for example, um, uh, cases uh, where you have stable blue phase or TGP phase. Uh, so uh, I'm interested, could you make uh, uh, liquid crystals which are strongly chiral so that you could also stabilize uh, these uh, blue phases and TGP phases? So can you make strongly chiral samples using your liquid crystals? Yes, sir. We have we have made a uh, chiral phases also, but blue phase we have not uh, seen, sir. We have seen only that pneumatic uh, like uh, phases, uh, cholestic like phases. I could show that uh, cholestic phases. Oh. Uh, this is the worm like texture observed in malic acid, which is a ferro texture, sir. Uh -huh. But so we have observed. Can, uh, uh, so, can you then control chirality in your samples? Uh, we have to do, sir, that. Uh, Again, we have to stabilize it and we have to do further, sir. The synthetic process should be fine-tuned, sir, to get the blue phases. Okay. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Samo and uh, Professor Prabhu. I have uh, one question. Tell uh, me, sir. Can you, move, can you move to slide number 29? <clears throat> yes, sir. Slide number 29. Yes. 
it's about the dac study sir the figure yes, sir. the figure, figure one uh, can you explain that's a cooling run there's a two peak there curve yes sir and the uh, heating what is the the main uh, issues there why it's what things happen like yeah because the molecule starts coalescing when we start cooling uh, when we heat it the molecules goes to the uh, liquid medium where they are free to move then when we stabilize it and when we start cooling the molecules gets coalesced so when it starts coalescing it comes from isotropic clearing point it slowly comes to pneumatic phase that is a uh, highly uh, less ordered phase then we could see a peak uh, nearer to isotropic that is pneumatic phase then it starts forming a layer like structure called as mectic phases that is mectic c smectic f and finally that higher peak in uh, news the information about the crystalline structure formed for the material that is around 40 degree which is of no use so our interest lies between pneumatic to smectic f wonderful sir wonderful presentation very excellent presentation from you sir thank you sir thank you so, so any any other questions or discussion uh, with uh, professor prabhu anyone there i think uh, Pro Pro professor prabhu i think <laughs> no more questions there oh, so thank sure, you sir. so much sir for your time and thank you to support our conference yes, i am uh, me to uh, feel pressure to uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to present my uh, work in this wonderful uh, conference sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you and prof mohan also thank you so much sir oh, it's a pleasure it's a pleasure to be with you okay, okay. We move on to next presenter, Dr. K. Vaketesan from Sri Vidya Madhya Art and Science College, India, to give a short lecture about growth and characterization of an organic inorganic hybrid single crystal. I would like to invite Mr. Tinagaran to chair the session. Um. Yes, uh, Doctor Wingley, sir. Uh, sir, Doctor Wingley, there. Sir, I'm prime here. Sir, okay, can you okay. hear me? Words. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Very, very clear. Very clear. And uh, your slide is so visible. Please switch to okay, slideshow, sir. Please switch to slideshow. Okay, sir. You may start sir, your presentation. Select shot, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Very good afternoon to all. Uh, one and all present this platform. First of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, the convener, organizing secretary, and the organizing members to give this wonderful chance to present the paper uh, during this pandemic period. Thank you. Thank you, Onandal. In the recent years, research on linear and nonlinear optical materials have gained considerable attention due to their potential applications in optical communication, image processing, data storage, optical modulators optical structures, etc. While comparing the inorganic with organic materials possess a large second organic uh, non-linearity, fast response time, easy to synthesis, and device fabrication. In, this, uh, in, in, in my work, I am going to consider organic and inorganic both the materials. My title is Growth and Characterization of Organic Inorganic Hybrid Single Crystal uh, tries 1 to ethylamine uh, K2 N comma N dash nickel 2 chloride dihydrate. Uh, tries 1 comma 2 ethyl diamine K2 N comma N dash nickel 2 chloride dihydrate single crystals have been grown by a slow evaporation method. The grown crystal were characterized by single crystal X ray diffraction, FTR spectroscopy, UV visible, photoluminance, and magnetic studies. The X-ray diffraction study suggests that the crystalline nature, uh, the single crystal XRD diffraction study uh, reveals that the crystal belongs to the monoclonic crystal system. The FTR study suggests the presence of ligand and metal ligand bonds. The optical studies mainly explain about the electron transition between the occupied and unoccupied states. The vibrational sample magnetometer study suggests that the crystal belongs to paramagnetic. Uh, first of all, just I am going to just recall the uh, crystal. Hmm? Uh, 
uh, in solid uh, solid are class, classified into two types uh, already we know crystalline and non crystalline non crystalline is nothing but amorphous crystalline crystal is uh, simply defined uh, the regular arrangement of atom uh, instead of amorphous the irregular arrangement of atom is nothing but uh, non crystalline or amorphous further the crystalline solid can be classified into two types single crystals and polycrystals single crystal is nothing but the entire solid consists of only one crystal but in the polycrystal the crystal system contains a number of small crystals and it will be separated by a definite boundaries there are a lot of techniques to grow the crystals basically we have three types of techniques growth from melt growth from vapor growth from solution from this three types i have chosen growth growth from solution further growth from solution are classified into two types high temperature solution growth and low temperature solution growth in this two type i have chosen low temperature solution growth further the low temperature solution growth are classified into slow cooling method slow evaporation method and temperature gradient method in this uh, three method uh, slow evaporation method is one of the simplest method and it should have a low cost for that purpose only i have chosen slow evaporation technique now what is slow evaporation technique at first we have to prepare the solution and the solutions are taken in the beaker and it should be covered with the good uh, plastic papers with the fine holes and allow to separately without any disturbance and further we have to allow the solution to escape freely into the atmosphere this process is nothing but a slow evaporation this is the basic concept the basic principle of slow evaporation this is my experimental reaction experimental work to carry out a uh, tris uh, one to ethyl diamine nickel to chloride dihydrate i have uh, consider uh, two types of component ethylene diamine ethylene diamine is one of the colorless salt and it's one of the organic material uh, this organic materials are react with the nickel chloride exhydrate that is nacl to 6h2o then finally we will get the tris ethyl ethyl diamine nickel to chloride the purity of the synthesized crystal was further increased by successive recrystallization process the blue colored crystal of dimension 9 into 2 into 2 into millimeter cube were obtained after the period of 18 days this is the systematic diagram of my uh, project work at uh, first we have to prepare the mixture and this mixture is allowed to uh, dissolved in the so uh, dissolved in the solvent of ethanol now finally uh, the solution is continuously stirred by the use of magnetic stirrer and after that i have to uh, uh, we have to filtered with quality wattman filter paper and it should allow the slow evaporation process after a few days we will get a lot of uh, seeds uh, after that we have to collect the lot of seeds and it should be dissolved again in the solution and it should be allow for again the slow evaporation process finally we will get bulk grown crystal i have take i have taken i have been taken uh, uh, five types of uh, characterization first one is simple crystal xrd uv visible spectra ftir spectra and photoluminance magnetic studies so this is my a simple crystal x ray diffraction of the grown crystal uh, using to carry out the simple crystal x ray diffraction i have used broker d8 advanced diffractometer employing cuk alpha x rays with a wavelength uh, lambda is equal to 1.5406 armstrong from 0 degree to 80 degree with setup size with step size of 2 degree Uh, using uh, this uh, x-ray diffraction uh, with the uh, suitable software uh, we can find uh, the lattice parameter a is equal to 26.23 armstrong b is equal to 13.9090 armstrong and c is equal to 12.91 armstrong from this lattice parameter we can conclude uh, the crystal uh, the grown crystal uh, totally uh, contains the crystal system of a monoclinic and also we can find the space group centrosmetric cc next i am going to discuss about uv visible spectroscopy 
UV visible absorption spectra was obtained on the ELIC SL18 double beam UV visible spectrometer, spectrophotometer in the range of 190 to 600 nanometer at room temperature. From this UV visible spectra, we can find the ground crystal as transmittance in the visible region with a cutoff wavelength 343 nanometer. A 343 nanometer. The absorption band at 343 nanometer is associated with pi pi star electronic transition contributed by the ethylene diamine molecules. The peak at 545 nanometer indicates the transition from the top of the valence band composed of chlorine that is 3b orbital to the bottom of the nickel 3d conduction band. Next, I am going to say something about the FTR spectroscopy. This is my FTR spectra of the ground crystal. Mm, this uh, FTR spectra we can classify it into uh, two parts uh, from uh, left to right that is uh, 500 to 1500 represents the fingerprint region and 1500 to 4000 represents the functional group region. Not only this FTR spectra, if you go through any kind of literature survey, the FTR spectra are classified into two types that is fingerprint region and functional group region. When we compared, when we carry out, uh, when we talk about uh, the width of the peak uh, of a functional group region and fingerprint region, there should be a small difference. The width of the functional group, the width of the peak in the range of a functional group region is some more I compare with the fingerprint region. And also, uh, the functional group regions uh, shows the stitching, the stitching between the elements. The FTR spectra is simply used to carry out what types of functional groups are present in our ground sample. The absorbed wave number of the FTR spectra, my sample is carried, is taken in the left hand column and corresponding assignment is taken in the right hand, right hand side column. 3481.51 and 3327.21 represents the NS stretching. 3242.33 and 2883.58 represents the CH2 asymmetric stretching. 2941.44, represents the CH2 symmetric stretching. 1582.34 and 1153.43 represents the deformation modes of NH3. 1274.95. 1153.43, 1099.43, and 987, sorry, 981.77 represents the CH2 rocking. 655.80 and 52.78 represents the strong carbon carbon stretching. And 493.78 represents the nickel chlorine stretching. This 493.78, that is nickel chlorine stretching, comes below the fingerprint region. Uh, next, I am going to talk about the photoluminance. The photoluminance spectra recorded by using F700 FZ spectrophotometer at loom temperature, 450 watts high pressure xenon lamp act as an excitation source. The sample exhibits the broad emission peaks at 420 nanometer with blanks to the violet luminance. So, the gr ground crystals are suitable for optical device fabrications. Next, I'm going to talk about the magnetic studies. This is the magnetic spectra of my sample. Magnetic property of the crystal was studied using the vibrational sample magnetometer. Uh, this magnetic study is carried out by a LAC4 VSM7410 instrument. The magnetic hydrosis clearly shows the paramagnetism with the saturation magnetization uh, 4.287 EMU and the coercivity of the sample is 326.26 G. Nickel inorganic compound behave as a paramagnetic due to the coercivity containing ligand EN in neutral. Hence, the present in plus 2 oxidation state and its configuration is 3D8 4S2. The paramagnetic behavior is due to the presence of a two unpaired electron in the D orbital of nickel metal ions. The Bohr magnet. Cal the calculated Bohr magneton value is the 
the single crystal uh, conclusion finally i am going to conclusion uh, the single crystal x-ray diffraction studies of the grown crystal belongs to the monoclinic system the functional groups were confirmed by the fdr analysis the UV visible NIR spectra explain about the electron transition between the valence and conduction band. The photoluminance spectrum shows the violet emission in the crystal. The magnetic studies confirm that the material belongs to the paramagnetic nature. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, one and all. I think uh, this is the right time to thank my uh, guide, Dr. L. Jodi Ma'am, uh, assistant professor, uh, NKR Women's College, Namakal, Tamil Nadu, India. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you to all. Sir, thank you, sir. Dinagran, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Professor Vengadishan, very yeah, nice exactly. presentation from you. Very clear. And uh, I'm quite, co quite impressed uh, with your FTR analysis, sir. Okay, sir. You, you, you explain about the, each number is re representing for this particular uh, uh, function is it is a very 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 great sir about you and uh, could you please explain about the the first peak sir first peak okay 1, this one sir yeah. three four yes. eight one yeah okay sir yes yes yeah yeah next stretching sir three four eight one two three three two seven represents the end of stretching Okay. Uh, that is the, that is the, the uh, I think it uh, the hydrogen molecules which is present in uh, nickel chloride nickel two chloride we react with ethyl diamine sir it shows the uh, NH touching. I see. Okay. Okay. okay, sir. Super, super. Uh, so I'm open to uh, our audience. Any any questions uh, or any discussion? Uh, with uh, Professor Vengadesan about this topic. Just now he shared with us. Anyone? Thank you so much, Dr. Vengadesan. I think uh, okay, th th thank no, you, more sir, thank you. no more questions. Thank you to support our conference. Very nice presentations okay. from you. Uh, thank you, Congrats, sir. Thank you. Congrats, okay, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much. Prof. Kaushik, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, anything you want to share regarding the uh, Dr. Vengadeshan's presentation just now? Okay. Uh, uh, Nabila, uh, shall we move to another presenter? But unfortunately, Dr. Sudagar unable to join us. Uh, is so very sorry to inform you all. Is uh, he was in funeral, so he couldn't make it uh, this conference. So the next presenter should be Professor Azizo, and he also couldn't make it. And uh, so now uh, I will I will hope that all the uh, audience to hall one. All two is uh, we finished uh, today uh, with the last presenter, Dr. Vengadesan. So I will switch to all the audience to hall one. Thank you so much. Uh, we will uh, meet you again tomorrow morning, uh, Malaysian time, nine o'clock. Okay, thank you, so thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
I wish you all the very best uh, to present uh, in our conference. Thank you so much. OK, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Faisal Betukimun, for the interesting presentation and Professor Kaushik for the session. I would like to ask Dr. Faisal, would you like to be the chairperson for Dr. Zilhafizi lecture? Okay, okay. 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 Thank you, Dr. We move on to the next presenter, Dr. Ha Dr. Zilhafizi Ben Zaidi from University Tun Hussein on Malaysia to present a review on Sintering 8 for Samarium Dopatsurium electrolyte modification to reduce sintering temperature. I would like to ask Dr. Faisal to share this session. Thank you. Okay, uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to invite my dear friend Dr. Zulabizi Bin Daidi to present his short, in, in, in the short invited lecture. With... Okay. With with honors, please proceed. And uh, this will have easy. Yeah. All right. Can you see my slide? Yes. Yes. We can. We can see. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, very good afternoon to our dear speaker, Mr. Faisal Ben Tukimon, and all the participants uh, for international summits and conference on material science, nanotechnology, and biomanufacturing 2021. All right, uh, my name is Zulhan Fizi Ben Jayudi. Uh, I'm from University of Tunisia and Malaysia. Today, I would like to share. Uh, I would like to share and present about a review on Sintering 8 for Samarium Dot Syria SDC electrolyte modification to reduce sintering temperature. All right, this is my outline for my presentation. I will start with my introduction uh, about solar cell cell S of FC uh, electrolyte. Sintering temperature method to lowering sintering temperature. Uh, sintering X, uh, I will uh, discuss about uh, the method uh, and the type of sintering, the type of sintering that had been used previously. And finally, I will conclude with my summaries for my review and conclusion. Okay, solid or cell. Uh, as you can see at the screen, it's a simple figure about a solid oxide fuel cell. Uh, generally, a single solid oxide fuel cell consists of two porous electrodes of an anode and a cathode, sandwiching a dense solid oxide electrolyte that is not permeable to other ions. Uh, the process for the process undergo in the solid oxide fuel cells started with the generation of electricity by the external circuit. Uh, the electron from the external circuit uh, is provided to the S of FC and oxygen gas from the air uh, will react with this electron to form oxide ion. This ion then travel to anode via the electrode. In the electrode, ion react with fuel and release electron heat, which then migrate back to cathode to an external circuit. All right. Uh, solid oxide fuel cells technology face the challenge of commercialization due to high fabrication costs of SFFC components. High sintering temperature is often unfavorable, as this will cause high fabrication costs. Needs to be controlled as to ensure ceramic products are well densified at the micro levels, therefore, yields product of excellent properties. The main challenge is the densification of the high performance electrolyte. Uh, at one, uh, 1,400 to 1,600 degrees Celsius, such as Samarium Bepsilia, at low operating temperature, 400 to 700 degrees Celsius. All right, for electrolyte. El electrolyte is uh, act as an insulator for negative ion uh, in the SOFC uh, that we can see from my figure, which is electrons. 
and allow only positive ions, which is proton, to flow from anode terminal to the cathode terminal. The dense ramming electrode transporting uh, oxygen ions and fill the space between the electrode's material. Previously, there are three types. Three types of electrolyte have been used at the SRC industry, uh, which is zirconia, seria, and lanthanum gallate based electrolyte. These three of electrolyte uh, used at the low operating temperature, which is from 400 to 700 degrees Celsius. Okay, after undergo several uh, modifications for the electrolyte, uh, for seria electrolyte, uh, it comes with two types of new uh, type of seria electrolyte, which is uh, gallium dioxide and samonium dioxide. So for my review, I will focus about the samonium dioxide because SDC have been acknowledged as the most promising electrolyte for SO5C operating below 600 degrees Celsius due to their high ionic conductivity and good compatibility with, el with electrodes. Other than that, uh, SDC also low activation, have low activation energy at low temperature. Entering the process in particles with into one solid mass by using a combination of pressure and heat. Melting uh, metals. Uh, so, uh, centimeter temperature have two method to lowering the centimeter temperature. Uh, first method is by using different powder preparation method, such as hypothermal synthesis, oxalate co precipitation, chemical combustion, vapor system, and mechanical milling. So, the purpose to use different powder preparation method is to decrease a starting particle size enable the densification at lower heating temperature because of the increasing driving force of sintering. The second method to lowering sintering temperature is by applying sintering aids such as uh, cobalt side, small side, oxide, magnesium oxide and others. This to provide the grain even at the initial entering while samarium outside promote range of particle. Okay, previously, there are many types of uh, ceramic outside that have been used to mix with the samarium luxuria, such as bismuth, bismuth oxide, titanium oxide, aluminum oxide, iron oxide, chromium oxide, zinc oxide, and others. But uh, amongst all the sintering aids uh, for some rain area, there are four types of uh, uh, sintering aids being preferred choice, which is copper oxide, copper oxide, lithium oxide, and terium oxide, which is iron oxide. All right, for lithium oxide, the effect of lithium oxide is uh, lithium oxide segregate to the grain boundaries instead of dissolving in the bulk. Uh, so when the lithium oxide, lithium ion, uh, segregate to the grain boundaries is demonstrate uh, and increase the effectiveness in being acidic and lower the acidic of the SBC. From one of the, my review, uh, the study with two most percentage of lithium oxide and uh, the result for the study is the two most of uh, lithium oxide can, can make the relative density of lithium SDC achieve to 99.5% at just uh, 900 degrees Celsius. The second review stated that 2.5 mole of lithium oxide uh, cause the grain uh, between the lithium and SDC uh, to, be, to be the fine grains of 100 to 400 uh, nanometer at 800 degrees Celsius and uh, high electrical conductivity of 0 0.014 semen centimeter at 600 degrees Celsius. Okay, for cobalt oxide, uh, the effect for cobalt oxide is uh, cobalt, cobalt ions have the tendency to enhance grain boundary mobility 
uh, of the ceria oxide since its ionic side is much smaller than that from the ceria oxide. From one of the review that I from that that I read, uh, 0 0.5 to 2 moles percentage of cobalt oxide can promote the densification of uh, submarine dust oxide uh, to 99% at 1200 degrees Celsius. The second view said that 0 0.25 mole percent uh, can increase the relative density of um, cobalt oxide SDC at 99% at 1300 degrees Celsius for just two hours compared to the pure, to the pure uh, seria oxide, just, just some rendered seria oxide. Uh, that have only that have only ninety six percent of relative density at higher temperature, which is one thousand five hundred twenty five degrees Celsius for two hours. For copper oxide, uh, the effect of copper oxide is affect the atomic diversity of the grain boundary of primary material and induce a cross packing between the grain boundaries. First review said that one. 1% more of copper oxide reduce the 1000 reduce from 1400 degrees Celsius without it to below 1000 degrees Celsius. The second view 0.5 mole percent reduce approximately 300 degrees Celsius from conventionally seen temperature of 1400 degrees Celsius. Next is ion oxide. For ion oxide, uh, the ion oxide uh, just uh, not a good not only good sintering aid, but also uh, scavenger of silicon oxide, pure impurity in the serial based, based electrolyte. For your information, when the uh, ceramic oxide uh, combined with the SDC electrolyte, uh, it will uh, uh, form, it form a silica oxide impurity that will uh, avoid they will low, they will make the conductivity of the electrolyte to become lower. So uh, iron oxide uh, can block the promotion of silica oxide impurity in the uh, electrolyte. So make the conductivity of the electrolyte to become remain unchanged. From uh, review from my uh, study, one more percentage of uh, Iron oxide can, can make a relative density from 95% compared to 8 to 2% for undoped when sintered at 1000 for 5 hours. To make it short, a uh, summary for my review. Uh, from this table, we can see that uh, when we use uh, lithium oxide for two to 2.5 more percent, we can reduce the sintering temperature to 900 to 1200 degrees Celsius. While carbon oxide, when used 0 0.5 to 2.5 more percentage, we can reduce to 1200 to 1300 degrees Celsius. And when we use the copper oxide uh, at 0 0.5 and 1.0 more percentage, we can reduce the temporary sintering temperature, temperature uh, to 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius, while iron oxide, when we use one more to two more, we can reduce to 1000 and 1200. So, from this table, we can see that the copper ion, when we use small amount of mol of copper oxide, we can reduce uh, more, more, the, more degree of temperature for sintering age. Other than that, uh, when the when the sintering aid such as uh, lithium, copper, and cobalt uh, mixed with the SBC, it will form uh, silica oxide impurities. Then the the oxide will promote the propagation of silica oxide impurities and cause the conductivity for the electrolyte to decrease. But for ferrum, uh, it's a special case because uh, ferrum iron oxide, iron oxide can uh, block the propagation of uh, silica impurities 
and make the conductivity of the electrolyte to remain unchanged. Okay, for the conclusion, uh, we can say that the copper oxide has identified as one of the most effective synthetic aid as uh, because with just 0 0.5 to 1 more percentage, it can reduce the sintering temperature of HDC for, from 1,400 Celsius to 1,000 Celsius. And next, its iron oxide is better at conductivity because it can block the propagation of silica oxide impurities and make the uh, conductivity of electrolyte to remain unchanged. All right, uh, that's, all, that's all for me. Uh, if any question from you guys, you can ask. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Dr. Zula uh, is, is there any question from an uh, other participant? So no no question. I guess I will pass back to Chairperson Farah Razali. Uh, Doctor Tina, any question? No, I mean, just want to uh, 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 congratulate uh, Doctor Zola Fizi uh, for his presentation. Nice presentation. Uh, very right, very you. calm, very calm and very steady your presentation, sir. Uh, <laughs> wish you best. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zulhafizi bin Zaidi, for the interesting presentation, and Dr. Muhammad Faisal bin Tukiman for the session. We would like to end our session for today. Any question, please do not hesitate to contact us via email or WhatsApp group. Mr. Tina, do you have anything to say? Sorry, can't hear. Uh, sorry, Andy. I'm sorry, Mr. Tina Karin. Do you have anything to say? No, I, actually, uh, Dr. Zolapis is the last presenter, right? For today's session, yes, yes. Oh, so then, uh, we can we can uh, end our session and end our session for today. Then we will start again uh, tomorrow morning, Malaysian time, nine o'clock. So we end our session for both all, all one and all two is uh, today we will end the sessions. Thank you. And Prof, uh, Prof, okay. yeah, please anything Prof you want to say or advice? Yes, uh, it was a really nice uh, opportunity for uh, I think all the participants and uh, all our distinguished delegates uh, to uh, share and exchange the knowledges uh fully with the interaction of uh participants as well as uh, you know academicians is very good i think i have seen few uh few of the two halls uh, i just monitored that uh they are very much interacting and a lot of questions is coming and they are um, uh, interacting is very well in a friendly atmosphere yes hopefully i i just expect to like the this type of cooperation from all participants to success the such event and hopefully we'll enjoy it in our next day uh, conference and uh, just wait uh, the, for the new things and uh, i wish you all the very best to all of the participants uh, thank you so much and uh, the thank participants you. here uh, yeah, and the participants, uh, I would like to ask, uh, already um, we announced that uh, we uh, uh, we have planned for the 
uh, article publication after this conference. So uh, those who are interested, I mean, uh, last uh, day, those who already presented um, in their paper articles and all, uh, you you can make prepare your article full length article uh, for just a format already given through email and also in our website. All all informations are given uh, within June. Uh, just one month, June 30, you, uh, on or before 30th of June, you can submit uh, to our chairman, uh, CC to me, uh, through email. Uh, based on our extra, uh, internal reviewers, we will process uh, for the Scopus publications uh, for this uh, article, significant articles. Yeah. Uh, so this is the information I'm sharing with you as a reminder. Uh, so uh, let's enjoy uh, for our next uh, day's conference. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Prof Kaushik. I think uh, Prof Samo wants something to share. Yes, Prof Samo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, 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 Professor Samo, please say something. Uh -huh. Uh, so, so I would like to thank you for this uh, interesting day. And so, uh, uh, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, join you earlier in the morning. <laughs> but I have some uh, <laughs> COVID vaccination, and so I'm sleeping all the days these days. But uh, I would like to co congratulate for your conference. It's really good. I learned a lot. So I like uh, that it is so oriented towards applications uh, and so and uh, towards uh, environment uh, protection and so these are issues that were uh, is uh, really important in this time. So excellent conference. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I also would like to say all the participants are included. Our all plenary speakers, executive plenary speaker, invited speaker. And uh, in our uh, short invited lecture, you should attain our last day uh, uh, is a uh, is a main feedback from the I mean, we will discuss what is our uh, main goal of the next next uh, goal of our conference or next goal of col collaboration. We will discuss uh, freely that we can make more organized uh, this conference. Uh, keep the uh, uh, I mean, keep processing in future very well. So uh, without any fail, you please uh, all I'll request to join in our last day. Uh, the current will uh, already remind that uh, um, all the participants, uh, we will we have a um, uh, very big, uh, just like a virtual program. And as well as uh, we will uh, discuss and we will feedback for our conference. Uh, this is most important. Uh, because how we can, uh, you know, uh, recover uh, our, uh, our, uh, which is not performed in this, uh, this time. So next time it will, we, we have, we have a get scope to recover. So this is uh, the main thing. Uh, so you please, uh, all participants, you should take your, uh, manage your time and uh, be present in the last uh, two hours uh, at the closing ceremony. So, and of course, we have planned uh, that day to discuss, I mean, distribute the certificate and all, uh, who is the, I mean, best certificate, everything. So, uh, without any fail, all should be there. Okay, thank you so much and uh, stay safe. Bye. If anyone uh, want to share anything, you can, you can. Okay, Professor, um, I think uh, we, we can, uh, we can end our session. Uh, tonight, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, tomorrow morning we, we can remind again for the, our final day session, final discussion yes. and award ceremony. So we can uh, both all we can uh, announce sir, about the panel discussion. That is a uh, it's not compulsory, but we want everyone join that panel discussion. To we, we want the feedback also from the panel. Yes, yes. Uh, so it is very much important. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Farah, you you may take over, and we can end the session, Sarah. Okay. Thank you.
All right, that's all for today. See you all tomorrow. Thank you, Sayonara, from me, you know, for our friends, Mr. Azadi. Thank you. Honorable Rectors of the Organizing Universities, Distinguished Speakers and Guests, Conference Participants, particularly those who are from abroad. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Malaysia, it is my great pleasure and privilege to welcome all of you to the second international conference on material science, nanotechnology, and biomanufacturing, ISC MNB 2021, which is held online beginning today, 25th until 28th of May 2021. I am pleased to thank all parties who contributed to the organization of this historic section, especially to our co-organizer, Mahatma Gandhi University India, Wuhan University China, and all the respective parties involved. We are having an international four-day webinar on nanotechnology, biofabrication, and polymer. Within this session, we will be sharing, deliberating the new technologies and the best practices by pre we are having an international four-day webinar on nanotechnology, biofabrication, and polymer. Within this session, we will be sharing, deliberating uh, new technologies and the best practices by various presenters across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to welcome Professor Kaoshi from Wuhan, China, who was pleased to be with us in this webinar. Respectful Professor Kaoshi, I must thank you personally for taking off time from your busy schedule and be with us. And we know you represent a rare breed of person with brains and complemented a lot of muscle power. And I'm sure you can add a lot of value with your idea towards IKTV and Serpang's development. We are always be very grateful on your contribution in connecting us with the key personalities in organizing this webinar. We are also honored with your assistance in the area of competency development among all our staff and students. We need to expand from institutional level to the international level. I'm sure a lot of our people among the audience today in this webinar are involved in competency development in their institutional capacity. We need to go beyond in contributing to the capacity development of the country. As a nation, we need to prosper and proud about the hidden potential of our staff. I am very happy that we have such a caliber person who are actively involved in such a magnitude, especially in the field of polymer and material science application. May I welcome the presence of Professor Sabu Thomas from Mahatma Gandhi University, India at this conference. May I also take this opportunity to recognize my team, especially Director Madam Rosnoizam Abdul Majid and her committee who worked very hard to make this conference a great success and also the dynamic staff of IKTBN. There are speakers from local universities, i.e. University of Malaya, University Tun Hussein On, University Technical Malaysia, Malacca. Nevertheless, there are also speakers from India, Bangladesh, Jordan, Portugal, United Kingdom, United States, France, Turkey, Russia, Argentina, Mexico, Japan, Greece, Jordan, Canada, Slovenia, Ireland, and Brazil, and also all the people who are interested in science and technology development who have gathered virtually today. So let's enjoy, let's enrich, let's expand, and let's excel in the field of science and nanotechnology. Finally, I sincerely wish all of you a 
very productive conference that will support the safe, integrated and, if, and responsible development of nanotechnologies. More specifically, it is my hope that you will not only be able to advance our thinking through the lively exchange of information and the significant brainstorming that should take place, but also to develop consensus positions on some of the key issues that characterize the different fields of application of material science, nanotechnology and biomanufacturing. I am sure it will be a memorable experience to all of us. So let's enjoy, excel and get the best out of the conference. And I wish all of you a good luck and a very best. Thank you. Ankara University, Faculty of Pharmacy, was the first faculty of pharmacy founded in Turkey. The faculty was managed by a core team with limited resources in the founding and early years. In 1970, 10 years after its founding, Ankara University, Faculty of Pharmacy, has made remarkable developments in every area of pharmaceutical science. Today, Ankara University Faculty of Pharmacy consists of 23,000 square meter of closed area. Our faculty has three lecture halls with 160 seats each and 12 classrooms with various sizes. To qualify as a pharmacist, the education takes a minimum of five years and the students must be successful in lab courses of analytical chemistry biochemistry, pharmaceutical microbiology, pharmacognosy, pharmaceutical botany, pharmaceutical chemistry, pharmaceutical technology, and pharmaceutical toxicology. faculty have two conference halls and one meeting room with 400, 260 seats respectively. All meeting rooms are in the service of the students. The recently established Pharmacy Museum, Devices and Chemicals Museum, are located in the main building of the faculty. Research laboratories of the departments Heberanium, Administrative Departments and the Deanery are the other divisions of our faculty. The teaching staff of our faculty consists of 56 professors, 13 associate professors, 12 assistant professors and 49 research assistants. The administrative staff consists of 95 officers. The total number of enrolled students at our faculty is 949. Thank you. 
The main library of our faculty offers a collection of nearly 21,000 pieces of books, dissertations and periodicals. The computer network behind our faculty to the main information processing center of Andrew University was founded in 1996. Ankara University, Faculty of Pharmacy, has two major central laboratories which are in use for research projects. The Central Laboratory 1, founded in 1996 and consists of three units HPTLC, UV spectrometry, IR spectrometry, HPLC, ILO fizzillator, polyograph, gamma scintillation counter ultracentrifuge, GCMS, spectrofluorometer, and a microscope for advanced applications are the major instruments included in this laboratory. The Central Laboratory 2 was founded in 2004. 400 megahertz NMR spectrometer, LCMS, and elemental analysis instruments are the major equipments of this laboratory. The hemodialysis solution production facility is located in the building of Ankara University. It is in a hospital and produces acid and alkaline-based solutions in compliance with GMP requirements under the responsibility of our faculty. All products produced in this facility have the CE certificate. A modern experimental animals unit was founded in 1998. This unit is in service of the researchers in order to care and monitor the experimental animals. The seating capacity of the dining hall of our faculty is around 350 for the students and 150 for the administrative staff. The Alamy Association was established by the graduates of Ankara University Faculty of Pharmacy in 1991 fitness centre and fine art centres, including music and paintings, are located next to the conference hall in Block B of the main building. These centres are founded in 2003. Eight student communities operate actively within this faculty. Ankara University, Faculty of Pharmacy, is looking forward to the future with confidence, with its existing research potential. Institut Kemahiran Tinggi Belia Negara, IKTBN Sepang, was established in 1990. With a total area of 9 hectares, it is situated in Bandar Baru Salak Tinggi and is becoming one of the leading National Vocational Education Institute under the Ministry of Youth and Sports Malaysia. IKTBN Sepang started with a turnkey project agreement between the Ministry of Youth and Sports Malaysia and Hindustan Machine Tool Private Limited, with its foundation stone being laid on March 10, 1988 by the Minister of Youth and Sports, followed by its full submission of buildings in 1990. The inauguration ceremony was officiated by Datuk Seri Najib Bentun Haji Abdul Razak on the 19th of October, 1988. IKTB and Sepang continues to provide high technology skills training in accordance to the National Key Industrial Plan.
the Ministry of Youth and Sports is very committed in transforming IKBM by providing various initiatives that would ensure IKBN to be the national key provider in producing high-quality Tibet graduates which fulfills the current industrial needs. In line with its vision and mission, IKTBN Sepang is always responsive to generate innovative human capital and is able to transform the skills institutions in the country. In accordance to the challenging globalization era, IKTBN Sepang offers a wide range of skills training, especially in mechanical, electrical, and electronic courses, from certificate level to diploma level. The National Youth Policy was developed according to 11 development structures, which act as a support medium for future youth development programs and it is very crucial under the context of K-economy. The Development Trust is a dedicated core in strengthening IKBN skills training program by providing modules that allows the youth to experience a continuous learning process. With the cooperation from the Department of Skills Development and Malaysian Accreditation Council, the Ministry of Youth and Sports is able to provide specialized skills training for all IKBN throughout Malaysia. At IKTBN Sepang, our students are exposed to theoretical and practical learning in which exercises are carried out using the latest equipment used in the related industries. Hence, we help them in adapting the real working environment after completing their training. Several of job opportunities are offered to the students of IKTB and Sepang, which they could pass their career onwards. The designation would be as Electronic Assistant Engineer, Industrial Hardware Manufacturer Designer, Press Tool Designer, Mechanical Manufacturing Machines Executives and High Voltage Touchmen. Apart from full-time courses, IKTBN Sepang do offers various part-time courses to industry workers and the public who intends to improve their skills. With a conducive and well-equipped learning facilities, IKTBN Sepang has implemented a variety of curriculum activities that help to create the student's learning style and optimize their performance. In addition to the conducive training facilities, IKTB and Sepang also provides various other facilities such as accommodation, dining hall, Muslim prayer hall, and leisure center to ensure maximum comfort for the students. IKTB and Sepang always ensure its skills training is in line with the latest industrial needs by having smart partnerships and memorandum of understanding with various industries. These agreements are aiming towards equipping the students with the latest technology as well as to ensure their marketability 
to the industries upon completing the training at IPTBN Sepang. Driving the students towards innovation, generating idea, and creative thinking were part of essential aspects in IKTB and Sepang with proper conduct of guidelines to enhance their quality and productivity. This is proven by various successful achievements of its students in innovation and skills competitions, either on national level or international level. Banyak ilmu dan juga pengetahuan yang lahir daripada IKTBN Sepang ini telah diadaptasi dan diguna pakai sepanjang saya bekerja di bahagian industri terutama ini. Jutaan terima kasih kepada pihak institusi kemahiran tinggi di Lendor Sepang kerana telah memberi peluang kepada saya untuk mempelajari pelbagai ilmu, kemahiran dan jati diri sehingga saya berjaya menamatkan pengajian saya dan berjaya menjawab jawatan yang baik di dalam kerja saya. Sebanyak pembelajaran saya di IKTB Sepang ini banyak membantu saya dalam melaksanakan tugas-tugas yang saya jawab sekarang sebagai maintenance di syarikat yang saya kerja sekarang. Harapan dan doa saya semoga IKTB Sepang akan terus cemerlang melahirkan ramai pelajar mahir macam saya. Saya rasa berkuah kerana berpeluang belajar di IKTB Sepang di mana kesemua ilmu yang diperlihi banyak bantu dalam kerja saya hari ini. Terima kasih. Pada pendapat saya, student-student IKTBN Sepang ini mempunyai disiplin dan semangat yang tinggi dalam bidang industri. Melalui uh, latihan industri dengan syarikat kami iaitu AAZ Global Sedang Berhad, kami sentiasa memantau dari segi disiplin dan performance. Oleh itu, saya menyarankan kepada industri-industri luar supaya dapat memberi peluang kepada pelajar-pelajar ini dalam sektor industri. Tanya kepada Kementerian Belia dan Sukan, khususnya IKTB dan Sukan, kerana berjaya melahirkan ramai tenaga mahir yang telah membantu dalam perkembangan pembangunan sektor industri negara seperti syarikat AEZ Global Energy. The successful national transformation towards a better future are depending on the excellency of leadership and harnessing human capital to its best especially by the youth generation of Malaysia. Terima kasih ya, Aktif Yang Sepak. IKTBN Sepang, the ultimate professional provider.